welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and the return to the channel of the Dutch master Arde van de Wetering um, with a puzzle called Spirals with perhaps the shortest rule set we've featured in many a moon, well many moon, many a moon. Um, this is, uh, and, and of course Arde's patent, patent, ah what's wrong with my mouth today, patented uh, two given digit uh, setup, just a seven and a six in the grid. I mean literally I can read you the rules in two seconds. They say normal Sudoku rules apply. Adjacent cells on a grey line must contain digits that differ in value by only one or two. Um, so I guess next to this seven you could have a five, or you couldn't have a six in this position, but you could have a five, six, eight or nine in either of those cells and that that's the the sum total of the rules um so as usual from Ard, something that 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 looks bafflingly brilliant on the outside uh, and we will have a go at this together in a moment or two i've got a few things i want to talk about first though it's the 20th of may today and that means it is the final day if you want to enter our May monthly reward over on Patreon. This is the Jewels of Osiris Sudoku Hunt from the Great Demono. So many, so many fantastic bits of feedback we've had from that. Um, we are going to be reading out some of the best entries that we've received uh, in the next couple of videos. Um, and if you, so if you want to become part of the honor roll anyway, do get your entry to us by the end of play today. Um, now, what else can I tell you about? We've got the Kids Sudoku Hunt on Patreon as well. Lots of you enjoying that. Lots of big kids enjoying that. Um, and yeah, I've got, <laughs> we received an amazing email um, from a rock star, no less. Uh, so Linnea, who's the lead singer of Thunder Mother, uh, supporting the Scorpions currently uh, on their European tour, um, basically saying that... Um, yeah, she watches. She watches cracking the cryptic and enjoys it, and even uses. Uh, well, she tells the audience a secret um, during uh, during the chat between songs, and this sort of draws them in. And <laughs> I mean, it's just brilliant. It's it's really made my day that email. So Linnea, thank you very much for sending it to us. Um, I feel yeah, completely in awe, frankly. Um, now, uh, birthdays as well. I've got quite a few birthdays to do today. So Timothy, happy birthday. You've turned 23 today. And I know this is not going to be like on your 18th birthday when you had 6,000 people singing happy birthday to you in the Royal Albert Hall. But you might, you might just have tens of thousands of Sudoku fans silently wishing you a happy birthday from afar today. So that's not bad. Um, then it could be uh, Kierman or Kierman. Kerman, it could be. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, Kierman Kerman, um, but your friend Adam wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. And I understand today it is your birthday, so happy birthday to you. Uh, Nick has turned 26 today, and I only know this, Nick, because your brother Zach wrote to us and said you'd like a shout out. And then Nathan has turned 42, and rather lovely, his, his father, Chris, wrote to us to tell us about that. So two generations. Uh, of Nathan and Chris watching the show, which is what we like to hear. And then finally, um, Pyle, uh, you've turned 29 today, and I know this because your boyfriend Andrew wrote to us, and I also happen to know, and I hope I'm not uh, sharing any secrets I shouldn't hear, that Andrew has made you a special Sudoku uh, where the arrows and palindromes therein spell out I love you. And that, I mean, that is the definition of love, frankly. So, Kyle, Nathan, Nick, Kierman, Kerman, and Timothy. I hope you all are able to have an awful lot of chocolate cake today. Um, I think that's everything. I'm looking at my list. I think that's everything. Right, I am going to tackle spirals by hard. And, um, well, I've read the rules. I mean, I don't think it's worth reading them again, is it? I mean, they are very, very simple. So those two digits have to differ in value by one or two. These two... And that sort of extends all around these grey lines. Um, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video, as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, I suppose... You see, what I worry about with with a puzzle like this is that there is some, some meta idea. Um, I don't know what that idea could or could or would be, but something like 
you can only put a 1 or a 9 at the start of a spiral. But I, don't, I mean, I just don't think that's true, is it? Um, I mean, it's going to be an... Or there could be a different idea to that. If I put 1 there, I'd have to surround it with 2 and 3. But I can surround it by 2 and 3. And then that square would be a 4. Because, no, yeah, that's right. That square would have to be a 4. And that square would have to be a 5. It's quite interesting. So if you do put 1 in the middle of a line... And the whole line sees itself. Yeah, okay, maybe maybe this is a way to start. Let me just go to let me go to the pen tool. Let's draw let's draw a, a line in here. And just think about this. So if you put one in the middle of the line, because because one has to be next to two digits that are within two of it effectively, you'd have to put two and a three around the one but they could be in either order but then next to the two because you can't put one or three you have to put four and now the three is constrained because it can't be next to one or two on this side and it can't be next to four so that's five and then it's i think it sort of oscillates so there is some sort of weird oscillation and maybe even a parity consideration so yeah, if you put one in the middle of the line, one one side of the line, it goes two, four, six, eight. On the other side, it goes three, five, seven, nine. And I guess that must be um, that must be reversible, mustn't it? If we, yeah, I mean that. Yes, yeah, so it obviously is. I say it obviously is, but let, let's just do it to make convince ourselves of the fact. Yeah, I mean that's six. I mean this is the same line we're drawing. It's just starting from the other side. It's just going to go five, three, one. Yes, yeah, so the line can the line actually could be joined together, couldn't it? So what I'm seeing now is that if I join up the line, like I, it's not going to be long enough like that. But but if it was a nine cell line, this one and this two absolutely meet the criteria. They're only one apart, so we could join join the ends up. Um, right. Well, the, well, the problem with this is that it's unhelpful, actually. Because although the line is forced, if if the all the digits on the line see you know see all the other digits, the pattern on the line is forced. But it can go clockwise or anti-clockwise, and and it absolutely can have a one or a nine in the middle of it. So we can't look at a box like this for example and just say ah well that cell's got to be a one or a nine because it doesn't have to be and that's a bit terrifying okay so maybe this is not the way <laughs> maybe there's nothing meta going on so let's start let's actually start with the seven and pencil mark these squares which have got to be five six eight or nine and that square can't be a six so Right, and this is where this is where my ideas are going to run dry because I can't see I can't see I mean if this is nine, we know we'd have to put eight next to it, and then that could be six, and that could be four. Um, am I missing? Am I missing something obvious about this? Is this in some way now constrained? Um, if this is nine, we know there's an eight here. Uh, okay. If that's nine, that doesn't work. But that's for a very specific reason. If that's nine, you have to put eight here because we need a digit that's within two of the nine, and we can't use the seven. But then I think that digit breaks because we, because remember we get that that funny um, uh, parity thing where we go eight six four two. So if we make this nine, we have to go eight six four two, and the six is going to clash. So that's not nine. Um, I wonder if there's a way we can get rid of a nine here. If this is nine, we go. 
eight, six, four, seven, five, three, Uh, that's interesting actually you can't you can't put three two one like this because this square's now broken it's got no option on its right side because it can't have two or three so okay but if that is three could you go one two and then that would oh you can <laughs> that's so weird all right so that's uh all right, so there's no problem. Okay, I was wondering maybe if we could force this not to be a three. Um, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. What? What? I mean, is it? Is it something to do with this junction then? The fact that. No, because it's just not, is it? I mean, this doesn't see this. So, sorry, that's a silly idea. Um, okay. Is it... Does it matter if it is a loop of... A loop of line? So you've got to join one end to the other. I'm wondering if that means this has got to be an extreme digit. I can't remember what my line was. I'm going to look at it again. Sorry. Um, yeah, well, OK, at least at least this line has some relevance now in the sense that that's an eight cell line and every cell on the line sees every other cell. Um, and also it must have a 1 or a 9 on it, or both, because in this box I could only hide one digit off the line. So there is a, there's definitely an extreme digit on there. So let's put, let's imagine it's a 1. So if there's a 1, we, we know we've got to go 2, 3, then we know we get the parity thing where we go, we go 4, 6, 8. Ig ignore the, this 6. This is just so I can visualize the line. Now, Now, so if there is a one on the line, the, the question in my mind is, can you put a nine on the line? And I think the answer is no. Because it feels to me like the nine is going to be It's, if, if I knock, if I knock, if I've got to knock one side of the line out, don't, don't. And if I knock the eight off, the nine can't connect to the six. But if I knock the nine off, the seven can connect to the eight. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Let's actually. It might be easier to see this if we actually do it uh, on this line. Let's actually just try it. So one, two, three. <laughs> I don't deserve that doesn't deserve a song I didn't do that deliberately um, right so that's got we know this is going 4 6 we know this is going 5 7 yeah okay there's just you just can never get to the 9 um, because the 6 must connect to an 8 okay so and obviously it's going to be the same if we start with 9 here we're not going to be able to put a 1 on the line okay well that's something so this square here is a 1 or a 9. Now, will it be much more useful if it's a 1? Because if it's a 1, it would have to go in one of those three squares. Uh, no, well, it couldn't go there. Yeah, OK, if that's a 1, it's got to go in this domino. <laughs> it's really nearly, that's really nearly very difficult for it to go here. I mean, it, literally, if it goes there, the line is totally forced, isn't it? It's got to go, because we've got to connect to at least a 5 here, we'd have to go like this, and that would have to be a 5. OK, 
Can anyone see a problem with this? Um, four has to be over here. Uh, hang on a moment. Let me just smell this over. What does... Hmm. What does the fork connect to? Ah, okay, this doesn't work, I don't think. And this makes me think we're on the right track here, actually. Right, oh, this is really beautiful, to be honest. This is classic art. I don't know how it's going to work for this one, but... I can see why this can't be a one, because if this is a one, this two, three thing is forced. This is forced to be a five. And we've got this problem of putting four in this box. Now, we know it's in one of those three cells, but let me ask you, how many could we put the four um, in the middle? Could we put it somewhere where it has two neighbors? Well, no, we couldn't, because the only things that could ever neighbor four in this puzzle are two and three on the low side and five and six on the upside. So, two, three, and five are unavailable. So the only digit that can, that can go with a four is a six. So that means we've got to put the four on the, line, at the end of the line within this box, which is there. And this can't be a six because of the given six, which is very suspicious, isn't it? So, this is interesting indeed because now the only the only way this can be a one is if this can be a one now if this is a one mm, now it's going to get more tricky isn't it because now i don't think well this now has to be a two or a three and this could be well, that's two, three, or four. I don't think this could be five because it could, wouldn't then connect to this digit, which would be an eight or a nine. So we get to use two low digits here. But we and we know right, and we know that we can't leave a four behind, can we? Because if this was if this was a two three pair, I've got the same four problem I had before. No, no, no. Yes, I do, actually. If that's a 2-3 pair, it has to connect to 5, and the 4 is isolated, and would have to go here next to a 6. Ooh, this is tricky. Okay, this is tricky. So, this is not a 2-3 pair. So, if this is a 1, this is a 4. And if this is a 4, that's still a 5. And we've got to put a 2 or a 3 down here. Uh, that's not going to work. That's just that just doesn't work. <laughs> Full stop. It doesn't work um, because what am I going to connect the two or the three to? Uh, nothing is the answer. So if, I mean, if this is a three, I've got to put a two down here. But it, but I have no actually zero options. If that's a two. I've got still got zero options. One, two, four, and five are not available. This is great. This is absolutely great. So now, now I've actually proved something. Uh, I have proved something definitive. Now, hang on. Let's go back. What was this digit? That digit was capable of being a five, not a nine, we decided, didn't we? And that digit can't be a six by Sudoku. This digit cannot be a one. So this is a nine. Uh, now, that's bad. Well, it's great because we've actually got a digit. But it's bad because nine can obviously go here. Um... Nine is in one of four places. Right. No, it's not. 
9 is not in one of four places because remember remember from our, our, our sort of hypothetical line earlier 9 if it's in the middle of a line always sits next to 7 and 8 and 7 is in the corner so I can't put those those are not 9 so 9 is in one of two places now and if 9 is here this is 8 I'm just going to I'm just going to look at that quickly if that's 9 this is 8 so this would have to be 6 and this square would have to be 5 and this square would have to be 4 and these would have to be 3 2 1 and that would have to be 3 and then oh and then we'd have to go we'd have potentially the 3 2 1 problem that we saw earlier so we'd have to go 3 1 2 i want to say with this probably being a 4 uh no that's a 4 so that might work ah bobbins okay sorry i thought we might be able to disprove something there um it's quite an unusual puzzle this because we're having to think about you know, a few different options in order to narrow things down. So if this is 9, this is 8. And then that's 6. Oh, right. No, all right. I should have looked at this one first. I, that just wasn't at all obvious to me that this would be more constrained, but it is. Um, if that's 9, this has to be 8 because it can't be 7. And then because because this digit can't be now nine, seven or eight, that has to be six. And I think both of those squares have to be five and that is not going to work. Isn't that strange? OK, so that's well, this is strange and wonderful because that is now nine. This is eight. So this is six. So this is five. Now, what can this six be next to? We know it's four. This is 3, 2, 1. The 3 must go here because 1 and 2 can't. And we know if this goes 3, 2, 1, this square's busted. So we must go 3, 1, 2, and that square's and are able to be a 4. And suddenly we are, well, I'm not going to say we're cooking with gas, but we have at least ignited the gas hob. These are a bit like gas hobs, aren't they? Um, Right, so this digit literally could be almost well within the, within the panoply of things it's allowed to be. It's got several options. It's only limited by the fact that it can't be zero. Um, okay, so along this line, we have to somehow get ourselves from four to nine in two steps. So if this if we go low, we can't go lower because three and two are not available. So this must be higher. That's got to be five or six. It's got to be on the top side of four. And then this square has to be within two of nine. So that's got to be seven or eight. So if this, yeah, so, okay. So if that's five, that could be seven. If that's six, that could be seven or eight. And our spiral thing here, our sort of closed spiral loop, we know those two digits are now definitely high-ish because they have to be from five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, okay, and now we, right, so we know that one is on our spiral, don't we? And we know So we know one is flanked by two and three, and then we get the parity thing going round. But the two ends that connect up are eight and seven. And right, that is not an that's not where the um that's not where the two ends meet from the parity the parity thing. Um how do I show this? So remember well, remember when we were inventing a line? We put a one in the middle of it and then we looked at how it would go and we said okay well it's got to have two and three on both sides and then you get this sort of even numbers going one side and odd numbers going the other and then we worked out that there's going to be an eight and the eight and the seven are going to join up on this eight cell line well the eight and the seven don't join up here because that square is going to break 
but these are still quite high. So they're not they're sort of when this 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 junction here is either this junction, it's either the five seven junction, which would make this a six eight pair. <laughs> Just gratuitous use of the pen tool. Or we've got a six eight pair here, which makes this a five seven pair. So from parity perspective, I know these I know that these have the same parity and these have the same parity. So Sorry, I'm just trying to understand what that means. So, I'm finding this very difficult to visualize. If this is so, so these are two high digits. have the same parity so on one side of this either here or here we've got we've got the other two high digits um, it's hard to explain but, but look at this line and imagine this was five seven for a moment that's one possibility that doesn't break this so if this is five seven um, then we know, and it could be 5, 7 in either order, don't forget, it could be 5, 7. But if it was 5, 7, it would have to go 8, 6. And that doesn't work. And if it was 5, 7 in this direction, it would go 8, 6. And that does work. But I think if it was 6, 8 here, so we're on this part of the line and we go six, eight, seven, five. That doesn't work because of the five here. So what I'm thinking is that these two squares are not allowed to be high. Because if they're high, they're both high. They're both from five, six, seven and eight. And there would have to be a five or a six in one of them. And that's that they can't be by Sudoku. So I think the way this line goes is that those two squares have to be five, six, seven, or eight. And then that one we know is going to be very high, and that one's going to be less high. And we know that the way the line moves is that the seven eights are a pair together, don't we? So now we know that's a seven or an eight, and we know that that isn't. And we know these squares are now one, two, three, and four, which is almost interesting because four has been four has been pushed upwards. But on one right, this is huge. Okay, because on one side of four, on this line, is a six. Well, that square can't be four then, because on neither side of it is a six. So that's got to be four. That's got to be six. That's got to be eight by parity. That's seven. That's five. That's three. That's two. That's one. There we go. Bingo. We've done it. We've just filled in this line using our hypothetical line. That's That was complicated, though. Um, I suspect... There may have been an easy way of seeing that. I don't know what it was, but that was how I saw it. And yeah, I, I, admittedly, I had to draw out a line to actually understand it. So it's it's sort of, it's that little pattern on this line. 
that allows you to work out how how that spirally sequence must work. So this square now is eight and this square is six by our old friend Sudoku and we've got loads of things we can write in. One, three and five here, two, four and nine there. This square is seven or eight. Uh, the only thing I'm seeing here is that 1 and 9, well, at least 1 of 1 and 9 is uh, in the middle of the sequence on, in this box, because we've got 1 and 9s here. Ah, n Actually, I'm just going to think about 9 for a moment before I confuse myself by also worrying about one because nine I'm seeing can't go well nine can't go anywhere in the middle of the line um, if we think about the nine in the middle of the line we know it's flanked by seven and eight so I'm wondering about this seven eight pair clearly let's let's just mark off places that definitely can't be nine in this box now if that's nine that has to be 7 or 8, and that doesn't work, so that's not 9. The same is true there. So 9 is now in one of three places. Now, if 9 was here, that's got to be 7 or 8, so that doesn't work. Now, right, so it's actually straightforward, sorry. If this is 9, that's got to be 7 or 8, so we could have just shown that very easily. 9 goes in the middle of this box, so this square is 7 or 8. And now, well, now we know that 1... One is in the middle of the line, which means it's got two and three flanking it. The two and the three up here are much less potent than the six, seven, eight, all looming and looking down there. That square, well, it could be as low as five, couldn't it? One is on the line, so one has got two and three flanking it. One, three, five, seven. That doesn't. Yeah, I think I think our next job. And I have a feeling there's going there were, there's a quick way and a slow way to doing this. And the terrifying thing is I'm not sure I can immediately see the quick way of doing it. But for it, well, for instance, if we're asking where one goes in this box, it's definitely not here. It's definitely not here because this one and five are too far apart. It can't actually be here because to get from the one to the five, we'd have to go one, three, five. It's the only way we would work and the three would clash. So now we know that the one is in one of only three positions. Now, can we narrow this down? I mean, we we know in one diet we know we've got the parity thing going on, don't we? Why can't I just see how that's going to work in this box? I mean, if this is one, we know from parity that this is going to be two and this is going to be four. One. So it's going to go, let's actually use central pencil mark. It's going to have to go like this and then that's going to be three. That's going to be five. That's going to be seven. Hang on, this is weird now. So that still, that still works, doesn't it? Because that's seven, that's eight, and that's six. Yeah, uh, sorry. I thought that I thought it would be a very obvious reason why I could just rule out something just quickly. There, there may be a reason. I'm just not seeing what it is. If that's one, we know that's three, and this is two. So this is four. But then this could be 5, because it doesn't have to be 6, because we didn't get the extension here. 
So that would be five. This would be a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. And this would be six, seven, eight, and nine. Oh, sorry, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm so, oh, hang on. This is seven, eight pair in this column. Do Sudoku, man. Sorry, sorry. This is, oh, Simon. I am so, so inept at solving puzzles. I cannot tell you. It's infuriating. Look. Okay, what's that digit then? Well, it's not got many options now. It's got to be within two of this one. So that's got to be a five or a six, given it can't now be um, from the seven, eight, nine panoply of digits. That gives us a five, six pair. So these squares are now three, four pair. And suddenly, well, this, this must help a bit, surely. <laughs> um, right, so can we... If we know for sure this is a three or a four. Don't we know on our line thing that the line thing had a one and a two in the middle of a three and a four? Uh, how do I show this? I don't think this can be a one anymore. That must be right, mustn't it? Because we know that that'll be flanked by two and three. That forces this to be a four. And the two, whichever way the two is, will not have a friend. So that's definitely not a one. So this was very important, actually. So perhaps that's why I couldn't see how to do it when there was a one in one of those three. This is helpful. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about if we imagine the strings of digits, because we get the one, because the one's in the middle of the line, we know that the one is flanked by two and three, and then on the on the two side there is a four. So we know that there's a one, two, three, four sequence on any line that has a one in the middle of it. And even if this is the one, and that's the three, and that's the two, the four would go here. So this, if that's the one, yeah. So these four squares are a one, two, three, four quadruple. Because whichever way we did it, they're forced to be. If we put the one here, this is two, three, and that's four. So that's a quadruple. If we put the one here, this has to be three. So this is two and this is four. And we get the quadruple. Now that square can't be a three or a four. So this is a one or a two. I think this is a one or a two as well, always. Um, if that's a one, clearly this is a two. If this is a one, this is a two, yes. So this is, this is a one, two pair. This is now not one, two. So this is three or four. Now, now I should pay more attention to Sudoku. Is this somehow resolving itself? Well, what's this digit then? Because that has to be within, I mean, it can't be higher than six, can it? Because it's got to be within two of one of these digits. So it has to be five or six and it can't be six. So this is five, which means this is six. This is seven or eight. Well, it's seven or eight, but it's got to be close enough to five to exist. So it is seven. So that's eight, that's seven. That's five. Um, come on, <laughs> this must, just, <laughs> it can't be left here, surely. Um, why, how do I know which way round this goes? I can't see it, sorry. Uh, why, brain, are you, do you let me down at these crucial moments? I don't know. I can't see. I can't see how to tell which way around this goes. I think it's, I'm hoping it's ambiguous because I can't see how to do it. Right, so what else is it then? It's going to be, okay, if this is one, two, if this goes three, one, two, 
this would have to be four or five. I don't know, I'm not sure. Six is on uh, six is in one of those two squares by Sudoku. So six is on on this funny sort of L pentomino shape. We've got an L te uh, an L triomino as well. Wow, I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting puzzle, this, because even when you make some progress with it, you don't really know. I mean, it, it, it feels like it's this box that must be relevant now, because I've got sort of this one-two pair. But it's not obvious to me how it's relevant. Um, there's a little bit of Sudoku we can do. Two, three or eight. Is that all we've got into that square, I think? Two, three or eight. What about that one? I think this is much less much less restricted but let's let's pencil it up anyway one three five six seven eight one one three four or nine so if this is nine we know this is eight and then that would be broken wouldn't it okay so maybe it's something like this if this is nine this is eight this would have to be seven or six and it can be neither okay so that's not nine so if this is one, three or four, this can't be eight because it's too far away. So this is now quite low, right? Okay, well, it was this, uh, it was this box. Um, now, right, what about that square then? That That is certainly a low offering. It, no, I was going to say, could it be a three in the corner? But no, it can't be. In fact, we're not going to get a three in the corner today. We got we got the um, the bogus three in the corner up there. Um, so this is one, two, or four only, I think, because it has to be within two of this. <laughs> I don't. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, Okay, so right, so it's something to do with nine, isn't it, in this box? Because I'm now seeing that nine is in one of those squares. But if I put nine here, that's going to be a six, and they're going to be three apart, not two apart. Nine and six are three apart, a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic. So nine goes there. Right, okay, so that's surely helpful. So this square is seven or eight. Well, it's not that good, is it? Oh, look, that can't be... No, it can be six, because four and six are okay. Oh. Bobbins. That digit's a little bit restricted, actually, now I look at it. It sees five different digits. One, two, four, it's one, two, four, or six. Okay, this isn't one, because remember one in the middle of a line is always flanked by two and three. And if we put two and three there, we're going to have many problems. So that's not one. So this is certainly even now. And this square, believe it or not, sees all the odd numbers. It sees 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So that is even as well. And it's not 2. So that is 4, 6, or 8. So the, this is a maximum jumpage between these two squares. Well, okay, but there's a 6 in one of those squares. So there can't be a 2 in this domino. Because 2 and 6 are not close enough together. So this is 4 or 6 now. So this can't be one. So this, so right, so look, we've got three even numbers now in this column. Um, so, so it's either going to be two, four, six, or it's going to be four, six, eight. So there's certainly a four 
in this sequence, which means that square is not a 4. Two, four. Ah, um, I bet you I've just missed some Sudoku somehow, somewhere. Where is... So seven is definitely on... Well, seven and five are on this line. That, 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 I mean, that is true. Eight is in one of those two squares. So if this is eight, that would be seven, that would be five. Eight, seven, five. I don't think there's a problem with that. Eight, seven, five. That would be a seven. If this is eight, That's got to be six. That's got to be four. Um, okay. All right. So, but if I, where's one in the box? That's the next question, isn't it? So you have to keep like playing with this in your brain. Where's one in this box? It can't go on a line with a five and a seven. It's too far away. So one goes here. So this is now a three or a four. That doesn't, unfortunately, resolve this digit. One is in one of those squares. <laughs> for, what's the, for what that's worth. Um, is there something magical we can do with this column? I don't think so. But I, I'm going to pencil mark it in just in desperation more than anything. Three, four, five and seven. Now that clearly can't be seven. Oh, I see, look at that. That's so evil. This square here can't be seven because it's not close enough to three or four, and it can't be five because of this. So there's actually a three, four pair here, which means that we get a five, seven pair in the column. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, okay, if this was seven, it wouldn't be close enough, would it? So that's five. This is seven. Okay, surely that's going to do something. He says, <laughs> desperately hoping that it's obvious what this does. Um, well, eight can't go here now, can it? because that would be five and it would be too far away. So eight goes here, which must be next to six, which must be next to four. And now this square, no, we still don't know. Okay, but that's useful then, isn't it? So that becomes seven by Sudoku. And we've only got to put in two, three and five now. So somehow, some way this is going to fix, this is going to be fixed, I'm sure. Uh, th this square must be 5 because it's got to be close enough to 7 and then that square becomes 3 and that square becomes 2 and somehow or other we've actually managed to figure that box out again I, I feel that there may have been a much a much smoother path to that but I, I just couldn't see what it was frankly <laughs> so there we go we've done we've done row well we haven't done it but we've done most of this row which is jolly exciting and they all the gaps seem to be correct don't they that's giving me a three here so the four must go next to a two one this all gets figured out uh, what about those squares then they are one six and eight which we have we do have a tiny bit of help for them with this digit and these squares are two nine and four ah two nine and four that looks good and we don't get any help unfortunately no we really don't um okay so let's do some pencil marking along the bottom then we need three eight and nine and this we, we do get a tiny bit of help there and one two and four we get a tiny bit of help there five is in one of those two squares that's the world's worst deduction um 
1 and 9. Have to be, well, they always had to be on the spiral. Uh, one of them can't be there. So one of them is going to exhibit its 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 sort of potency in terms of a 213 triple or a 798 triple. Um, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to do. There's a six in one of these. The six could absolutely be here next to the five. Oh, right. Oh, oh, oh look at this. This is absolutely, I mean, it's crazy. What's that digit? Well, it's got to be within two of five. It can't be three, four, and it can't be seven. So it is six. That's, that's mad. That is mad. So this is six by Sudoku. We've got a one eight pair now left over here. Um, that digit has, I think this digit has a lot of a lot of possibilities. Unfortunately, if it's lower, we know it's four. If it's higher, it's seven or eight. I don't know. I mean, okay, so there's got to be some sort of clever trick here. I'm, just, I mean, I'm trying to see anything in terms of how to think about this even. It's, I think it's got to be the one or the nine. In some way, there is some restriction, isn't there? Now, Come on, Simon, what is it? How do we think about this? If I... Do I want to put one here or do I want to put nine here? Or, I mean, maybe there is a way of, of doing this line and you put both... Let's, just, let's see if we can actually manage to put one and nine not here. So let's make that eight. Eight, nine, seven, five. That looks okay to have a five here, but that's where I've got a pencil mark. Three, one, two, four. Yes. So I don't even think, I don't even think it's necessarily the case that this square is a one or a nine, and that's, that's even more disturbing. What about, well, we can't go seven, nine, eight. If this is nine, we'd have to go seven here, eight here. And then because that's six, that has to be five. I mean, that's what, I mean, frankly, that's, that feels right to me. A nine here. That would even give me a digit down there. Or well, maybe the better way to attack this then is to wonder what happens if this is low. So if this is low, i.e. it's four, you have to put a two there. That's that looks interesting. Okay. So you have to put a two there because because everything else is unavailable. Five, six have gone, and three is impossible. So this would be a two which means this square has to be one or three. Um, I don't know, one, three. Oh, I see the five would be in the wrong place then if I went one, three, because I need the five here and it would be there. So I can't go one, three. So I have to go three here and then, then. And if I go three, I can't, I don't have two and four available to me. So this needs to be, oh, so, I, uh, so the one can now only go there. So that would have to be five. Well, this isn't gonna work. This is not gonna work. How do I get seven, eight, and nine in this box? 
The 7 has to go next to the 1 by Sudoku. Yeah, okay, maybe in fact maybe that's there's a that's a way of seeing it a bit more quickly now I think about it. If you do put four there, because this can't be seven, and this well in fact this this square here is forced to be two, seven is actually forced into the middle of the grid, isn't it? Hang on, where's the seven in this box? Aren't, ah, okay, look, I miss pencil mark that. I mean, I, I don't think it's mattered, but that, but that would then be a seven. So I've not used this line of digits. Um, right, and if this is seven, this square would have to be higher than seven because it can't be five or six. So this would have to be eight or nine. But 9 is now on the line, so it would have to be 9, because 9 needs to have 7 framing it. So this would be 8. 7, 9, 8. This is now forced to be 5. 1 is in the middle of the line, and 1 has nowhere to go, because you need to frame the 1 between the 2 and the 3. Yeah, I mean, it's not simple. I think, again, I'm, I'm left with the conclusion that there is an easier way to see that this is not four, but I don't know what it is. So, uh, but I have proved this is high now, and it's seven or eight. So, unless the nine is exactly there, this needs to be. Well, this needs to be nine, and and we then know the order because this can't be eight. So the question now we have to wrestle with is how 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 can we rule out this being nine? Now, if this is nine. We now know that one, that there is a two one three or a three one two sequence on this line, and it's not there. <laughs> um, this has to, in fact, that would have to be a seven, or in fact, that would have to be eight, wouldn't it? This would have to be eight. This would have to be seven, and that can't be five. So that's going to have to be five, and that does it. There's no way now to put a one two three sequence or a two one three or a three one two sequence on this line. It's broken, and that's gorgeous because that means that nine is along the line. And once nine is not at the end of the line, we know it's flanked by seven and eight from all the work we're doing, which means that this square is on one side of the nine, and the only cell we've got available for the nine is here, which means this is seven, this is eight. Now. This square has to be 5 because everything else is unavailable. These squares are now 1, 2, 3, 4, quadruple. These are not 4. Um, in fact, this is going to be a 1, 2 pair, isn't it? Because isn't this the same as we got down there somewhere? Maybe, maybe I shouldn't assume that, but I, I, I feel that that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, Okay, now can we do anything now with this? That's become a 7 by Sudoku. This has become a 2. This has become a 9. So we have got something. That's become a 3. That's become a 1. This has become a 5. This has become a 3. Yeah, here we go. Oh, no, that I, I am wrong. I am wrong or I've made a mistake. Because I thought that was going to be a 3-4 pair. And this was going to be a 1-2 pair. Ah, um... Okay, so this square here is an 8 by Sudoku, so that makes this a 9. And that square's become a 4. And we need something here. So this has to be a 4 because it's got to be within 2 of 5. So this square can't be a 1 because they, these two would be too far apart. And this has become, oh, I see, this has become a three. So that's a two, that's a one, that's a three, that's become a four. And Sudoku is our friend. Let's not, let's not neglect Sudoku. I think that may have been a foolish thing I have been doing. Um, please don't let me have made a Sudoku error. That seems to be an eight, that seems to be a one. So that's become a two. This has become a one, that's become a nine. So that should be a two, that should be a nine, and that should be a four. And that should be a one and that should be a two and there we go perhaps let's click tick yay wow okay apparently i'm the first person to ever solve this puzzle which 
that's interesting. I mean, um, okay, that, that is interesting um, because it has gone to the testers. <laughs> so maybe it's being passed on to me without having been solved, which is possible. I mean, that was quite tricky, actually. It was a very unusual puzzle. Um, it was a very unusual puzzle because it required... I don't know what the right word is, but you, you sort of have to conceptualise how lines might work. I mean, I think it's fairly obvious that ones and nines are very restricted if they're in the middle of a spiral. But actually to distill that down to allow us to, you know, deduce this solution, I at least wasn't clever enough to work out how to do that without a little bit of case testing. I, I was conscious, as I once I'd worked out this was a 1 or a 9, that, I mean, it, it seemed obvious to me that 1 was very restricted in this box, but I couldn't see immediately how I could just rule it out. I had to actually sort of look at this, and then I think I worked out it was in one of those two, and then I had to think about how that might unwind. Oh yeah, and that's right, and then I had to work out that, oh well, four would be trapped down here and be there, and the given six would matter. I mean, all of that was, it was doable, but it required quite a lot of thinking. Um, uh, thinking along a path. It's a really, it's fascinating puzzle. I mean, this is what you get from Ard. I mean, this is actually, I think, one of Ard's harder puzzles. Often, they often they're sort of twenty-five minute puzzles, but this one, this one is not. <laughs> there, I've said it. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a go. I'd be fascinated to know how other people approach this. Whether there was something more meta I could have done or appreciated about about it in order to. Um, you know, crystallise some of the ideas that were going on more concretely. But I, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually pleased to have got through that. Uh, I think that was that was challenging. It was definitely required um, required some effort, didn't it? A little bit of mental effort on a Saturday. As I say, let me know how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.